Okay? You right? Set on your side? All good, yes. Sir. All good, okay. Be quiet on set. Okay. Tarot Documentary presents Filming in Thailand. A podcast for movie lovers with exclusive stories from behind the scenes. Rolling sound. Sound rolling. And action. Hi, I'm your host, Stéphane Lambert, and this is a new episode of Filming in Thailand. Here we are with our special guest today, Sanya Suvanapuma. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Stéphane. You are a special guest because you are not directly involved in the filming scene. Um, so I will still ask you the first question that is mandatory here. Please, near. Why? Uh, the sound. It's too, too, too small. Okay. So you owe me a coffee. So we start again. Okay. This is a new episode of Filming in Thailand with our special guest today, Sanya Suvana Puma. Special guest um, because Sanya is not um, exactly involved in the filming industry, but, and you will see soon why I invited him, is very much into the filming industry and the filming scene. Sanya, thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you, Stefan. First question is mandatory here. Are you filming in Thailand? I did actually film two weeks ago for the 10th anniversary of the closing of Bed Supper Club. So we are right into the, the, the subject and, and the reason why I ask you to join us today. Uh, you're, uh, among other other things, the founder of Bed Super Club that uh, ruled the night of, I was about to say Bangkok, but not Bangkok, the world, because everybody who who came to Bangkok from all over the world was somehow a guest of Bed Super Club. But we'll go back to Bed Super Club a bit later. Um, reading through your your profile available on on uh, on internet uh, online. So it means it's hundred percent true. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that you were a prince. So should I call you prince? No, no, you can just call me Sanya. But are you a real prince? I am a real prince. Yes, from my father's from side. Your father's side. Yeah. Prince from Laos. From Laos. So your 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 you were born in Laos. Or? I was born in Bangkok. You were born in Bangkok. But my father's family is from Long Prabang. Yes, in and Vien in, uh, in love, yeah, not so love. So you were born in Bangkok, and then you studied in France. I studied in Paris, correct. When did you get involved into the uh, the night scene as a as a, as a student in Paris? Um, no, no, I was uh, I was going out in Paris, but not like um, not more than any you know other student. Um, I got um, I really had. I got a friends organizing parties and nightclubs in Paris, and that's how I, you know, got interested in how to promote a party. Um, who was this guy? Do we know him? They were, um, oh, this is, uh, <laughs> they were mostly known in the west of Paris. Okay. Uh, they were going doing clubs um, at Regine, uh, Castel, um, um, studio A. I don't know if you heard of Studio A. Um, these were like a real um, incub incubator for a lot of young promoters. One of them was uh, like my younger brother's generation, uh, distributing flyers, you know, okay. um, outside of school and organizing parties. And today he just sold uh, his company to a core group. For a few hundred million euros. Nice. Yeah, his name is um. Uh, what's his name again? Um, he owns the uh, Rasputin. And uh... as an outsider at that time, um, Bet Super Club was this kind of uh, UFO uh, landing in in the middle of the Uh The architecture was crazy. It was said to be uh, this uh, removable. Uh, a place that could leave on the spot and go somewhere yeah. else, but it never it never changed location. It stayed there for what ten years. It stayed and uh, almost eleven years. Yeah, almost eleven years. So like so like one week 
a, like a week short of 11 years. <laughs> no, actually, no, it's wrong. We closed after 11 years. Okay. And it stayed, um, it stayed there like another six months um, before being dismantled and built elsewhere. Yeah. Let's go back to the the day you opened. Yes. What happened in your in your head the day you opened? Do you remember the, the your state I, line? I remember it was a weekend. It was a two day event uh, because the guest list was too uh, was too big to to all do in one day. Even though the capacity was uh, about like a few hundred people, uh, we had one night. Uh, we had a Friday night for friends and family and, and, and socialites. And then the second night was for press. It was an instant success or you had to? Instant, uh, yeah. Instant success. Instant. Uh, How come? Are you you're a magician or you? No, 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 we had powers. <laughs> there were a lot of elements that were made, um, made it like really talk of the town. I mean, the, the building itself. Mm -hmm. Very futuristic, um, completely um, like original. You know, uh, it was a tube um, on stilts, and there was no hardly no um, vertical beams in the, in the building. There were, but it was the the main feature was like uh, ribs. You know, it looked it looked like um, an a, a, an oil tank. <laughs> So you would say this, the the secret sauce for the success or the secret ingredients to make this sauce successful, mm. the um, f number one, the quality of the of the staff, and then the sound, the architecture, the food. There's there's too many elements. No <laughs> if you had to to say okay, this because if you ask me, or if I mean when I ask people about Bed Super Club, they say how oh, you know the place was amazing. Like they they all remember this architecture that was iconic. Yeah supersede everything else and then of course the rest was, was, was. so it, uh, it 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 was a place at a time i think the time was this very um futuristic design was a trend that you could see around the world uh you know like you had um this restaurant of pierre Gagnier in london sketch you know okay uh, that was yeah. one of your inspiration it was similar whitish um Kubrick style. It was sort of like a Philip Stark also uh, touch. Was it inspired by Kubrick as well? Um, so, but place at a time. I think today this kind of design would feel outdated. It's coming it was, back. It's coming back. I know. <laughs> and like it was just before the trend of you know those um, industrial. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Um, like uh, workshop, uh, like speakeasy. Mm -hmm. It was just before that. You know? It was very chic. It it was yeah. It was very. It was hard to maintain as immaculate because uh, all white, you know. T um, mm -hmm. But um, so you know, yeah. Combination of food, um, eye candy, um, performances, uh, having some acts, and. Um, Little, you know, uh, performers roaming around the room, interactive mm -hmm. uh, art installation. We did a lot of art installation. We had a big room in in the restaurant, and that allowed us to to do quite a few like thought stimulating installation. What were the the quality, or what are the qualities required to be successful in 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 being a promoter, art director, to have to run that kind of of of, of venue? Mm, I guess um, uh, you have to have a good relationship with sponsors <laughs> <laughs> because all you do it costs money, um, whether it's to bring. Um, uh, like a, a DJ, international DJ, or to to create an event or to build an installation. You know, this this can't come from your uh, from your own, you know, uh, um, cash flow. I mean, it has to sure. Be. So you you need to market that uh, very well to the sponsors, alcohol sponsors, and I guess the rest is just a matter of taste um, and. You know, 
believing that this is what you know what the the market wants i i remember you mentioned about uh, buddha bar but yes. i i was uh, I uh, was once at Bet Super Club, and uh, next to me was Claude Chal. Claude yeah, Chal, Claude Chal. You know, he came a few times. A few times. He was the guy behind uh, uh, the success of uh, Les Bandouches in Paris. Yes. And then he created, I don't know if he's the, the creator, but he was the, the guy who make it popular and such a success, the Buddha Bar around. He was the art director. He was the art director. Oh. He's the one who, I guess... Uh, created this this or launched this trend of having places with their own playlist on CDs first, yes. then with, with playlist uh, with Stéphane Pompeyac. Yep, uh, from the cost, uh, cost hotel cost. But at that time, we we're talking about Buddha Spa with him. Buddha Spa, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was a place where the world was meeting, and that's going to be our second part. Yes. <laughs> You are listening to Filming in Thailand, a podcast by Tarot Documentary, with your host, Stéphane Lambert. We are now going to to get into personal stories. Okay. okay. Bet Super Club. Bet Super Club welcomed uh, a huge number, I said a huge number, but I mean it, a huge number of, of VIPs from all over the world. People that were publicly famous, people that were not publicly famous. I myself met... Uh, Actors, mm -hmm. people from the indus for film industries at the at Bet Super Club. Um, do you remember meeting those like early celebrities uh, for the first time? Because some some became regulars, but the yeah. first time you had a famous actor. I have a name in mind, but I would like you to. Oh, we had a lot. Um, they came, um, you know, anonymously. Um, Some of them, um, what's her name? Tony Colette. What uh, she plays in the Sixth Sense. Um, uh huh. Um, oh. She was sitting next to me. Um, Ron Perlman came. Um, these were like just uh, anonymous. Oh, um, Sewell, mm -hmm. you know who, who is a British actor. He plays the bad guys. Uh, he, he came on a Models Night one. Um, Rufus Sewell, yes. Uh -huh. uh, I think that the, one of the highlights um, was the um, closing party, how do you call it, the wrap? The wrap-up party. The wrap-up party of um, Alexander. Oh, yes. So Alexander was a super production. It was a huge production. Um, And the director was? Uh, Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone. Um, he, Brad Pitt was... There was um, so Brad Pitt was part of the film. No, no, no. It was uh, how is his name? Uh, Val Kilmer. Uh, Van Kilmer. Ah, oh. um, my bad. Um, and of course, the the main actor. Uh, but I remember Rosario Dawson. She was very beautiful. Um, so, so, so uh, Oliver Stone, director of Alexander, yeah. that was being shot in Thailand at that time. Yeah. Um, organize his wrap-up party. It means the the, 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 the the party to celebrate the end yes. of the filming at the Bed Supper Club. At the Bed Supper Club, book out a uh, whole restaurant side. Um, what was their main actor name again? I can't remember. Val Kilmer. Uh, Val Kilmer was one of the guys. The other guy, the guy who played Alexander. Um, so they were there and all the crew was there. There was, I think, 100, 150 people. And I remember Oliver Stone came, shook hands with everyone, and then left. <laughs> he, he said, thank you, thank you, and then left. Uh, it was a big party. Yeah. My most memorable <laughs> meetings was um, early, so this is like 2004, probably. I had two musicians from Germany coming. Uh, one was a German Persian, kind of a you know young playboy looking uh, percussionist, and the other one, his partner was this um, old, you know, a skinny uh, a DJ okay. uh, who was looked look like a mad scientist, and he would play minimal ambient, and the percussionist would play live on top, and I heard I heard there. 
the music and it was very aquatic, you know, very underwater, uh, uh, you know, soundscaping. Mm -hmm. um, it was beautiful. And then, so I decided to do a theme, uh, underwater theme to de decoration, you know, um, in, in, for, for the, for the two or three nights that we were playing at Bed Supper Club. And, and so it was a whole, this, you know, universe, you arrive, uh, like, you had Medusas, you had like, um, projections on the wall or we had the shimmering lights, uh, you know, and, um, um, so to explain the context, it was, uh, Friday and Saturday, these, these were like banquet dinners where you, you, we opened the doors at seven thirty, but then the show started at nine. Okay. So in between you, you welcome to, to order snacks or whatever. And, and then dinner is served like in the, as in a banquet you know, course by course. And along with the courses, there will be acts, you know, and, and performances according to a script. I see this um, character which looked very agitated. It was one, one guest. He was walking, you know, pacing back and forth. And I, and I came to him, I went to him and it's like, is everything okay? He's like, no, I'm very hungry. I'm very hungry and I, I'd like to start eating. And I said, well, it's in one hour, you know, you can, you can order snacks. He said, I don't want snacks. Um, somehow, I don't know. I was like, okay, well, you know, and I was very busy. So I asked one of my man managers to take care of him. And as I, lo I looked at people coming in, in, in the restaurant, then I see some, someone I recognize, uh, middle age, very elegant in, in a suit. And he looked like the, a character that played in Subway, the movie, uh -huh. um, with Christophe Lambert, you know, the Luc Besson movie, movie. about uh, a woman who is escaping her um, husband. And, and uh, he, the, it's a character that plays the husband of Ajani. And it's Constantin Andronov. Oh. And he's an actor and a producer as well. Absolutely. So I went to see him and I said, you know, Mr. Andronov, it's a pleasure to have you tonight. Um, and, um, I, d you know, I d he's, he's like, yes, I, okay. And, um, and I'm like, you know, it's a, it's a coincidence because you produce the Grand Bleu and this is like, uh, an underwater theme. So it's very serendipitous. And then he, he, I, I see that he wasn't really looking at me when I was talking to him because he was looking over my shoulder. Okay. A bit concerned, and I, I looked at it, and there was a the irate guest. He was strangling my percussionist while he was getting ready, <laughs> and so I rushed to see the jewel car. Is no, no, he was like he was taking the guy uh, really from the collar. Like, okay, and he was shaking him, and the guy actually became very angry because he didn't have food. So he realized that these were the performers to get attention. <laughs> so we gave him like a plate of. Uh, Fried calamari. As you were nice. Well, I mean, you didn't kick well, him out. No. <laughs> well, it was just starting, actually. Do you have a disaster in mind? Like you, you tried something and too many. Yeah. <laughs> like an iconic, an iconic one. It doesn't need to be big. Oh. something like you know. Yes, I mean, I'll, the first art exhibition was a video, video projection, of a very quite famous Thai video artist. You remember his name? I, no. so the third name to look for. Well, no, was, we find the first one. The yeah. second one was not. Now we have to find this famous videographer. Um, I I didn't come you know, okay. prepared to the podcast, but um, uh, famous uh, Chulalongkorn teacher uh, who was doing um, time based media, mm -hmm. and his presentation was a a, a video. His work, artwork was actually a video and it came with sound. And at the time we didn't have, um, we didn't have a, a you know, you know a, a mixing board where we could play. You could not connect the video. We, you know, we, we had a projector in one side of the room <laughs> and the sound, which was on the DJ booth on the other side. So <laughs> to, to make it happen, we had this long cable. Okay. And we had a long cable to, to connect, um, was very long because the Bed Club was what? Yeah. 15 meters old? It was more? like 
And the white room was, uh, yeah, I think 20 meters. Uh, and somehow <laughs> we had to press at the right, at the same time. <laughs> so the room was packed, Okay, packed room. And then, um, signal is done for, to project and it starts well <laughs> until someone, and that person was, uh, the curator actually, <laughs> he tripped on a cable <laughs> and so, terrible. so the, the image was playing, but without the sound until we realized, uh, um, no, until, you know, and you always, always rehearse, you know, when you have, um. Of course, but it like never goes so, according to the viewers. It never, but you have to rehearse, yeah. So we, we learned the lesson very, very early. We had many um, flops. Um, Tell us another one. Well, uh, um, there, are, no, there are some that I can <laughs> rather not talk please, about. Please. It's only you and me in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we had... Um, What did we have? Um, there was a there was a, um, um, a police raid um, that was um, at the time uh, the, our our, um, our, our friends from uh, the uh, Lumpini police station did a drug test. Okay. Uh, at the peak of our Tuesday night, um, the hip hop night. So it means they come, they open, they switch off the music, they switch on the live. There were 300 high souls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, and they, they, they uh, close the door, open the light, and everyone has to do a pay test. Um, <laughs> and it's called Black Tuesday. Uh, okay. It's Black Tuesday for us. Um, I mean, there's nothing you could do. Uh, sure. Are you still uh, visiting those uh, who went to... Well... Under, you know, behind bars? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, <laughs> the, um, it was, um, uh, let's say that we, yeah, 30% of the, the business was gone afterwards. I would like to know that going to be the last question for this segment. Uh, if you had, uh, I mean, you had long queues to get in the club. Yeah. Remember? As a, <laughs> if you had some, you know, people that were supposed to get in that were not um, let in and that that created some some complicated situation uh, we could I could get in through the kitchen <laughs> I got a lot of friends through the kitchen yes it was crazy at the, at the beginning was was, was was really was really crazy there was there are you know there are steps going up to the big rail yeah and um Um, no, I mean, a lot of, uh, we, we had strict door policy, you know, dress code, age. Um, so of course a lot of kids, uh, came with fake IDs, you know, I meet people today and like, oh yes, I used to go to bed summer club and I'm like, when you look very young, <laughs> uh, yes, hashtag fake ID club. You are listening to Filming in Thailand, a podcast by Tarot Documentary, with your host, Stefan Lombert. And this would be me. We are still with our um, very special guest, Sanya Suvanapuma, the uh, founder of Bed Super Club. And we are here to, to talk about this, uh, this time in uh, Bangkok, uh, um, when Bed Super Club was uh, the talk of the town, was a place to be. It was a place where people were meeting, where artists were developing some uh, innovative art, art forms. Uh, you told us about uh, uh, some uh, success, some flops. And we have here something called a time machine. So mm. imagine that uh, you, uh, you had the opportunity to travel back in time and meet your own self at the age of 20. Uh, what advice would you give yourself or what just what would you tell yourself let me uh, start the time machine this is the time traveling machine well yeah I mean interesting question um, I think to uh, you should, I, I would tell my younger self to travel more in time in well in time you can you can read more books um, but um, 
I think traveling around the world, yes, uh, get to know other more culture, you know, more cultures, more how people celebrate. I think, you know, this is about celebration and the art of celebration. So, um, watch more movies. Do you feel that uh, at 20 years old that you meet today or mm -hmm. are more curious than what you used to be? Um, well, I mean, they're most They're mostly um, yeah, they're very much online, so they get um, they. Yes, I guess, I guess all the all the their knowledge comes from uh, online. So I mean, it's it's a form of curiosity that um, was different from what we had when we grew up. I mean, it's we you know it's when we grew up we couldn't choose a song and listen to it within 20 seconds or download a book within one minute you know, so um, I would say they have more access to content than, than we had Could it be possible to um, you know to, to have a Bed Super Club uh, a kind of Bed Super Club reopening today I'm not asking you if we're going to reopen Bed Super well, Club this is another discussion but like uh, like I said it's it's always a case study you know um today would you know what what would the market uh, want or need i think i think if you're an innovator you you don't you you come from a point of view that you know the market will want you f you feel the market i if you follow what they want it's you're going to create something that's already existed so if you but if you want to innovate you should uh, create something that people will want. And how do you know that is this thing? I think from observation, I realized that um, dinner, party, restaurants, they're pretty much the same concept everywhere. Very loud, um, uh, all about drinking, um, and it's always the same format. Now you're working on the on a, uh, on a new concept? I, I'm working on... Um, a case study, yeah, in case uh, we find investors to any location, I could be ready, yes, yes. It's stay out tuned. there, it's out there, stay, stay tuned for more. <laughs> Our bank account number is <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> But more seriously, I mean, people, are, if people listening or watching us are interested in uh, in your ideas, they can contact you. The, the contact are in the comments. Okay. So yeah. That's for sure. Please do. <laughs> yeah. Is the, 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 the demand for social clubs, social, I mean, place where you can socialize in real, mm -hmm. uh, and still exist? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Of course. Um, places where, yeah, I mean, uh, like-minded people, Can can meet up and, um, but it's it's again it's very um, it's very limited to just uh, you know um, drinking and dancing and I think like Soho House in Bangkok is just open and it's a, it's quite a nice addition to. But it's expensive. It's quite uh, exclusive. Um, it's a club only member. It's a member only club. Well, I think it's like a. Like a thousand five hundred dollars for just Bangkok per year. It's it's not. The, the, I think it's okay. Um, Expensive comparing to clubs where you just you know come, come yeah. for a drink. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, yeah, I think people just meet up in different in different occasions. Uh, it's interesting you mentioned Soul Club because it's the, the their concept is is based on a community. You you belong to the yeah. community before going into a place. Yes. Yeah. You, you you think this is this is where it's gonna go? It's uh, you need you need this sense of belonging, and then you need maybe a place to materialize it. Yeah, I mean, um, the good thing was like something like so house. It's it's very artistic and, and um, for creative people. Uh, originally, it was for creative people to to meet up and uh, and, and yeah, and socialize. And um, I think. Um, 
places like um, Wolfpack, where they had a cinema. Uh, do you remember the? These are, are sorely missing. Mm -hmm. It's a shame the cinema closed because of lack of um, audience. And sure. They had a great program. You know, I mean, places where you have art and, and different, these are sorely missing in Bangkok. Before we part, um, Fiat is going to help me uh, offering you the award for best guest ever, uh, best guest ever of filming in Thailand podcast. Okay, thank you, Jacques Martin. Thank you, Nicole Dufan. It's the same, absolutely. Um, but okay, don't get excited too much. Everybody gets it. Oh, <laughs> please open it if you yeah. want. It's a, um, it's a cup. It's a mug. Right. Yeah. It's the official um, Tero documentary mug. You can use it for coffee, tea, or whatever liquid <laughs> that you fancy. Um, um, coffee. coffee, coffee, of course. 50 coffee a day. 50 coffee a day. You look, you look quite relaxed and cool for 50 coffee a day. Um, I believe you are working on other, other stuff, to, I mean, celebrating your history in this field. Uh, correct. Yeah, I have uh, this uh, a long time project, uh, but it takes time. <laughs> it takes time and and to for for what kind of project for research and, oh, yeah, so and then writing. I mean, it uh, takes a lot of time and it um, uh, since since business, you know, since you know the pandemic is over, business is back. Business is back, and it takes a lot of time. Time flies. It, it's um, um, I need like two two months away. I can't do. I don't know how people do that. I can't do just one hour a day. But they they, they go away. Yeah, <laughs> they go away. Here as well. Uh, yes. Yeah. And they write. Well, I'll keep you posted on that. One. Please, please, absolutely. Okay, people, fantastic. That's a wrap. Merci. That was filming in Thailand, an original podcast brought to you by Terra Documentary on Rudy Podcast with your host Stefan Lombe. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode of Filming in Thailand. I, I forgot to record. We have to start again from soon. <laughs> you don't mind?